Good day, architect. My name is Chapit Chi Bahala, and my thesis is named Salagbon, a proposed Northern Mindanao Root Crop Research and Training Center. This project is located at Poblacion Opol, Misamis Oriental. The Philippines is still primarily an agricultural nation in spite of the arrangement to make it an industrial economy. Most residents still live in the country zones and bolster themselves through agribusiness. The nation's agribusiness part is compromised of four subsectors farming, fisheries, livestock, and forestry, which together utilize 39.8% of the work constraint and contribute 20% of GDP. Fruit crops have gained attention as an important source of food, feed, and industrial products in view of their versatility in uses high yield potential and adaptability to various cropping systems. Filipinos consume root crops as major substitute or supplementary energy food to our traditional staple crops. It is difficult to maintain production of traditional crops such as rice and corn sufficient to keep up with rapidly increasing population and the demands of our expanding livestock industry especially because of frequent adverse climatic conditions and the recurrent outbreaks of destructive pests and disease. Root crops are affordable and easy to grow and have become a primary source of sustenance for many people in developing countries. In the Philippines, there are five distinct root crops stand up. These are cassava, sweet potato, ube, taro, and yam. These and other root crops are subjects for research because of its demand. Northern Mindanao is one of the biggest supply of root crops in the country, especially cassava which ranks first in the country after its autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao or ARMM. The existing root crop center in Visayas established during the time of the former president Ferdinand Marcos. The center is functioning up to today and helping the small-scale farmers Due to its long term existence, the existing center may not be able to cater new facilities and also the number of interested in advancing the knowledge in farming is growing as the time goes by. So, the training and the research facilities will be lacking. The need of root crop center here in Junten is it will be accessible to our farmers from different provinces here in northern Mindanao. Since there is a great potential for expanded production and export of root crops for feed and industrial uses here in Mindanao, it will provide opportunities to our farmers and it can also be the training ground of the students on their OJT, and to farmers adapting the new varieties that could possibly suit their area and increase their production rate and it will also give them income stability. This center will support the existing one and provide innovative ideas that could help them improve and help develop high yielding varieties and improve cultural management, post-harvesting handling, processing and utilization practices. The problem statement will be flashed on the screen. Project Goals and Objectives The main aim of the study is to provide guidelines in establishing a Northern Mindanao Root Crop Research and Training Center. Environment Objectives 
project aims to be green as possible through the use of low carbon footprint building construction method and materials, application of sustainable building technologies, and energy and water efficient design. Social Objectives The project aims to provide opportunities for farmers and researchers on organizing a comprehensive and integrated root crop research program to develop high yielding varieties and improve cultural management, post harvesting, handling, processing and utilization practices in northern Mindanao. The project aims to provide and boost the production of fresh and raw materials for industrial uses in our country. This will further strengthen the agricultural output here in northern Mindanao. Economic Objectives Having our own training and research facilities in northern Mindanao, local farmers and researchers will be supported by the government through this center. Trained and skilled farmers and researchers and their discoveries will be the biggest asset for our nation. The establishment of the root crop will boost the government's economy and also invites further development of the locality. Design Concept Tropical Paradigm – Maximizing Architectural Experience Through Principles of Passive Architecture Design Objectives Under design is to come up with good architectural character that addresses the usage of strategies of passive architecture. Planning – to design for a research and training center according to its users' needs. Site to maximize the opportunities the existing site has and use it for the benefit for the development. Method of construction and materials used What is precast concrete? Precast concrete is a construction product produced by casting concrete in a reusable mold or form which is then cured in a controlled environment, transported in a construction site, and lifted into place. In contrast, standard concrete is poured into specific forms and cured on site. It is fire-resistant and sound attenuating characteristic of precast concrete products then make them ideal for variety of building applications. Reducing moisture and creating energy-efficient environment are two other convincing factors when considering a precast concrete building. The diverse variety of buildings included below encompass the versatility of precast concrete as these materials come together to create an impressive result. The benefits of precast concrete will be flashed on screen. Intercropping system Intercropping is the growing of two or more crops together in proximity on the same land. As a result, two or more crops are managed at the same time. It differs from the crop rotation in which two or more crops are grown one after the other. Solar powered irrigation pump A solar water pump system is essentially an electric pump system in which the electricity is provided by one or several photovoltaic panels, a typical solar-powered pumping system consists of solar panel array that powers an electric motor which is in turn powers a bore or surface pump. Let's move on on the diagrams. I've divided the development into three major parts. First development is the main. This part is the center of the development in which a series of program activities whereas they can learn, experience, interact, trust leveling, and commit. Secondly is the field or actual. This is a merge connection with the main part featuring actual farm activities whereas they can enjoy, grow, and learn. Lastly is the third part. The future development. It is allocated for future zoo especially for additional needs for inputs of activities. Site zoning. 
this diagram shows the zoning of the three major parts of the development. User Analysis On this part of the diagram is where I've identified three major program spaces of the development and how I've arranged them. First is the middle one, the blue one, which is the research and training facility. The yellow one, which is the admin building. The orange one, which is the dormitory. Object of inspiration for the main building. The diagram itself shows how I incorporate the root crop system into the overall plan of the main building. Site analysis. The site is located at Poblacion Opor, Misamis Oriental. The figure shown is the suitability of the site in terms of the crops that will be catered. The chosen site is not part of the flooded area as you can see the map. Below is the urban land use map and the chosen site calls for agricultural land production, which is essential to the development. Below is the landslide susceptibility map and the chosen site is low landslide area. That's the reason why the chosen site is suited for the development. Site Development Plan This is the site development plan of the area. The yellow arrow is for the movement of the vehicles around the development. The blue arrows are the flow for the people entering the development. There are three gates of the area. First, the right side is the entrance for the vehicles. The middle one is the drop-off for the public transportation and the entrance for the people. The third one is exit from the development. Separation of the entrance and the exit gates of the development is to avoid traffic congestion. Please refer on the legend located at the bottom right of the site development board for clear information. The main building consists of three zoned parts, the private, semi-private, and public, based on my zoning of the spaces. The blue one is for the laboratories which have an easy access to the agri-farm. I've positioned the laboratories there because of the nursery plants that is being observed in each laboratory. The orientation of the lab is according to the sun path because it is essential to the plants to get that morning sun. Also, that is why I zone the agri farm in that area. The form of the plan has to do with the object of inspiration which is the roots. It serves as connection on each part of the plan and it is easy to locate the rooms of the building. My private and public zones are the classrooms and the lobby, which has an easy access and it is easy to locate for the users. I've divided the classroom into two parts, left wing and right wing, because of kinds of topics workshops being catered. Right is for the cassava and sweet potatoes, and left is for the taro and ube. There is a small box surrounding each of the classroom that is where sample display type of plants for them to easy to identify directly. Also, they have a panoramic view in the room ideal to zone the different types of classes, seminars for them not to be crowded, and the impartment of knowledge will be clear. I've put an indoor garden because I believe it's one way for the staffs and researchers to calm their mind, and it is believed that it has an impact on their health and productivity, and it has a positive effect that is continuous to be seen. Natural light, airflow is good too. Indoor gardens may even reduce energy use and cost because of the reduced need of air circulation and artificial lighting. Same as the main building, I've put in their garden for airflow and natural light to come through to the building. This dorm will serve as the units for the users that are enrolled in a certain program. It has canteen for them not to go outside of the premises just to eat. The unit has three single bed, one toilet and bath, closet and working space. The first floor is for the female users and the second to third floor is for male users of the unit. There is four fire exit in the building. It is easy to locate because it is close to the units on each side. Same as the two buildings, interior garden is essential for the productivity and health for the staffs. From the left, it has root crop improvement office, project proposal development office, socio-economic office, accounting office, security office, executive office, mapping office, manager's office, conference room, canteen, 
admin department and comfort rooms. There are four laboratories for plant and soil. It is for cassava, sweet potatoes, and taro and ube. It is suggested by the Office of Department Agriculture Region 10 Root Crop Department to separate each laboratory to avoid mixed up information and there is one laboratory for water analysis. In the floor plants, it has direct access to the nursery or observed area of the labs, which they can directly see the observed plant and it is easy to locate. Putting nursery area for the experimented plants close is ideal for the laboratories for them to easily access it. And if the plant is at the stage of vegetative, they can transfer it to the bigger area, which is the farm area that is near the lab. Focal point of the exterior design of the buildings Large louvers Louvers are another passive system that delivers long-term benefits. Their horizontal blades are specifically designed to facilitate airflow while keeping other undesired elements out such as water, dirt, and debris. Internal heat gain is frequently a problem in large commercial structures. The need of cooling is determined by internal heat gain and not just outside temperature. There is opportunity for ventilation. Airflow in these applications is frequently created via louvers allowing free space for air to flow while keeping out unwanted elements. Factors such as what is behind the louver as well as climate, storm probability, etc. will determine how easily the louvers prevent the egress of rain. In conclusion, the project is recommended to be implemented and materialized in the community. It's because of its ability to improve the lives of the farmers here in northern Mindanao. The project will definitely improve the regions economically, environmentally, and socially. Thank you so much, and may we all be safe in these trying times.